Hi, I'm Ellie from crystallings.com. Today is Wednesday, July 12, 2017. Um, today I want to talk about Antarctica from two perspectives, science and pseudoscience. From a scientific perspective, we are learning very much what's going on beneath the ice, beneath the surface, in terms of flora and fauna, and what may or may not have happened there tens of thousands of years ago. Uh, from also from science, we have today's news has one of the biggest icebergs ever has broken off from Antarctica. And what that really means is that with global warming, it's all coming apart and the secrets that lie beneath Antarctica may they just be as simple as, I don't know, some flora, fauna, um, little bacteria that maybe will grow and teach us more about who we are and how we came to be. But then we segue to pseudoscience. My experience with Antarctica in terms of pseudoscience has to do with a friend I met in 1989. Her and I used to do some remote viewing here and there. Sometimes we just let our joint consciousness take us wherever we, you know, wherever it wanted to. Other times we had a specific designation. One of the first times that we did a remote view was to Antarctica, which actually surprised both of us because there we were looking at the continent and then boom, we were underneath the ice where we discovered, much to our surprise, UFOs. And what had to have been habitable cities at some point. Um, we went down there several different times and we looked to see why we were brought there, what was so significant, and we assumed it had to do with all of alien research and the fact that, you know, most souls are not from here. Souls come from other worlds and other places and other dimensions and other um, parts of the grid. But Antarctica was amazing to us. We had never seen so many downed, crashed, antiquated craft. They were round, they were circular for the most part. Some were a little, little more not perfectly circular, but they were just there and they looked like no one had flown them for a very, very long time. Written on top of them were all sorts of symbols that we did not recognize and yet we felt, both of us, felt this affinity for this insert, shall we say, in the hologram of our reality. And that's why we went back down there so many times. Is there something familiar? Uh, in terms of finding living beings down there, we did not. That doesn't mean they weren't there, but we did not see anything down there. Uh, our combined energies also, if there were sentient life forms down there, they would have seen us. Because when Deja and I went places, we could hear the sounds that were going on in a specific place, in a specific timeline. We could see that others were looking at us. But we didn't see that. I don't think that's why we were there. We were just there to explore and browse and, and realize, okay, there must have indeed been ancient aliens who came here. Uh, this was before the TV show Ancient Aliens, before we thought about ancient aliens coming to this planet and what might have happened and what clues they would have left behind. But there was something about these UFOs that I remember going back and I remember thinking if I could enter one of them and, and put my hand on, I don't know, you want to call it a control panel, I could get it started. I know that sounds so silly and off base, but I could fly this stupid thing. But that never happened for me, and I stopped going back there, and people were talking more about the sciences and the pseudosciences. Now, last year, an interesting thing happened. Uh, Secretary of State John Kerry, part of the Obama administration, and astronaut Buzz Aldrin, 85, um, his age, uh, they went down there. Buzz Aldrin got sick. He had to be evacuated out of there to New Zealand. But we all know, speculate, reason, conclude, and even remote view that they found ancient cities down there. They're there. 
There's no question about it. Um, why is this important right now? Because the hidden secrets of our planet, no matter how you look at it, no matter what window you open, the hidden secrets of this planet are about to be revealed. You can see it everywhere, feel it everywhere, know it everywhere, and reconcile it any way you want as to whether you want to call it end times, end of a hologram, uh, it's about time. You can call it whatever you want to call it. But down under Antarctica, make no mistake, there are artifacts, there are ships, there are cities, and even now when I take my consciousness there, I see crystals, huge crystals, not like the big large crystal caves in um, Mexico, not those. Crystals that were brought here, they're not natural formations. These are crystals that were brought here for a specific purpose and a specific reason. Uh, what that is, you can speculate on that again. I don't know. I don't think it has anything to do with saving the planet, healing the planet, or altering the destiny of the hologram at all. It's just this, this little awakening. I see them as buildings. I feel that they tune in to some matching harmonic or wave on Mars where I see similar structures, the moon and out, they go out, they go out, they go out. I can see it, I can see the wave harmonic. Uh, you're certainly welcome to go in remote view and see what's going on down there. To me, I have found it one of the more interesting places to remote view to on this planet. Uh, I know a lot of people are drawn to Mesoamerica and India and all the other interesting places. You know, there's, there's so many, there's so many sacred sites, but Antarctica always, oh, not always, since 1989, which is almost, what, 30 years now, ha draws me to it. Like there's something here. There's a clue. There's an answer. When I look at it now, I do not see humans down there, although the speculations that, you know, our government, other governments, whatever, do have bases there. I'm not seeing that. I'm just seeing what used to be active, which can be reactivated by who I don't know. It, it's almost like I'd love to fly down there and, and just go down and go underneath and just put my hand on things. It's all I need is to just touch something, to activate something. And I know this really stretches pseudoscience to the max and takes us into ancient aliens coming here and all the other theories, but it resonates as true for me. And as I see that everything else around us is coming to the fore, so too the information that will come from Antarctica very, very soon. This is not something that's gonna happen in 50 years or 30 years or even 20 years. It's going to happen very soon. Maybe an earthquake will bring it. You haven't thought about that. There are earthquakes that go on all over the planet. I mean, the ones we read about, of course, are the ones in populated areas. So, okay, so we know about those, but that doesn't mean the plates everywhere are not broken. One good earthquake shaking under Antarctica, and we are all gonna be very, very surprised and shocked as to what comes up. Not so sure about alien life forms, not looking at that right now, just looking at something that has called to me for the last 28 years and still makes sense to me as there are answers, there are clues here. Um, I know I speak about Donald Trump as one who is to bring a lot of answers to, you know, to the public soon. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be about Antarctica. I think Antarctica, UFOs, aliens, all the sacred sites, everything else, they're gonna have to show themselves on their own. Donald Trump may find out some things, he may bring some information forward. I mean, when I look at the ships, you know, the ships they talk about, the UFOs that go by, the ones that are videoed all the time, they go in and out of mountains and they go in and out of bodies of water and whatever. Those round ships to me, don't ask me why, but those ships in my brain correlate as they're antiques, they're antiquated. How the heck do they even 
fly. I don't know why I come from this place, but I just feel I have yet to see a UFO in my mind and in my travels and on the internet and in sci-fi movies that has been impressive to me. Mostly they have, they're just not right. I can just look at a UFO and tell you if such a thing could possibly have a propulsion system or ever existed anywhere. I mean, it's fun in film, you know, but. I don't know how I know a lot of the answers I know, but I just do. And Antarctica for me is a key. It's an important key. And in this crazy world where not that much is, is following what we used to call a normal trajectory, a, a, a predictable path, everything just comes out of the blue, which is end times or Aquarius or put a metaphor there. But what I see in Antarctica is going to be very important when it all, shall we say, hits the fan and everything comes out. Um, you can learn to remove view. You can do it naturally by yourself and see what's down there. Maybe if you're artistic, you can draw it. I'm not artistic at all. But if you are artistic, you could potentially draw something from Antarctica and, and email it to me. Okay, and I would be, um, you know, more than happy to see what you have to share. But it's there and it's calling me. It's like really nothing much on this whole planet and this whole program is calling me. But Antarctica still does. And now in the news, big ice, icebergs separating, okay. The, the, this is from BBC. It says the giant block is estimated to cover over an area of roughly 6,000 square kilometers. That is humongous. Um, we're going to just wait and see what happens, but it's going to happen soon. And with all the stupid, ridiculous things that make no sense in the world today, this is something that can get me excited. I don't know about you guys, but anyway, take a look, see what you think. Keep watching Antarctica. Thank you.